Friday is here. That's Tommy right. is in the motherfucking house. Goddamn straight. Goddamn straight. It's a long ass trip. My knees hurt like a motherfucker, but I'm here. Jesus! You have a problem? Turn off your station. Kiss my ass! I don't know! What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chris D, a.k.a. Willy Wonka, a.k.a. Doobie Man, back in the motherfucking house. Mic check, mic check. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. If you can hear me in the stream, let me know that my audio is working. Give me a thumbs up if you can. Uh, We're going to get started. So a couple of channel updates. I know I haven't posted in a while. And a big reason for that is because I have been working. I got classes starting at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, then a nice little break until 4, then I go 5, 6, and 7. And January, February, and March, what I was doing was, what I was doing was a special class, and I'll show you guys, the DR boot camp for brothers that are looking to transition over to the Dominican Republic to live here. This is a course that I've created, and this course basically will give you everything that you need in order to live here effectively uh, as an American who doesn't speak Spanish and doesn't know anyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Chris. I moved to the Dominican Republic a little over 10 years ago. I came here for vacation first, uh, and when I came here for vacation, I liked it so much, I ended up staying. Well. I've been here over 10 years. I have my own apartment. I got a bank account, all of that. How was I able to do that? And I came here and I didn't speak Spanish. How was I able to open a bank account? How was I able to get internet? How was I able to get a phone? How was I able to get the contracts? How was I able to even understand the contracts of how to live here? I came here with no experience. The first time I came here was at the end of 2012, because I thought the world was going to end. And I actually talk about that in one of my first podcasts that I did. I uh, talk, you know, I tell my little story or whatever. And so when I came here, I just assumed that they was going to speak English. Before coming here, I didn't even know where the Dominican Republic was. I couldn't tell you on the map where, where this country was. I knew about Jamaica, I knew about Cuba, but I ain't know nothing about no Dominican Republic. So when I came here, to my surprise, everyone was black or brown or light skin or yellow or red bones. And I was like, God damn. All right. Oh, that's how y'all working it? Okay. As soon as I got off the airplane, I was like, God damn. Oh, oh I'm enjoying this trip. Nobody told me anything about the Dominican Republic before I came here. The only reason that I chose to come to the Dominican Republic was because I put a lot of places, I wrote a lot of places on a piece of on pieces of paper. I put them all in my baseball hat and my Astros hat. I shook the motherfuckers up and I threw them in the air. And then one of them I grabbed up off the ground and that was the one that said Dominican Republic. I bullshit you not. That was the only reason I came to Dominican Republic. The only reason that I came to Santo Domingo was because I figured it's safer in the capital. So I was thinking about like in, in terms of the United States, if I'm going to California, it's probably safest if I go to Los Angeles. And if I go to Texas, it's probably safer if I go to Houston or Austin versus, you know, Brownsville. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying it might be just a little bit safer in the capital. That was how I figured. So that was how I ended up coming to Santo Domingo. And when I came here, I ain't have no social media big back then. I wasn't on 
a tender. There was no tender back in 2012. There was another website called Dominican Cupid. And I also talk about that within the course, uh, how to navigate or use your social media effectively to find the type of woman that you're looking for. So what I'm saying by saying all of this is that I have a lot of experience. I started off not having no experience. When I first came here, I met a couple of ladies from the, from the website. We went on some dates. And from that, I was able to build on those relationships. The two first women, the first two women that I met when I came to the Dominican Republic, both of those women I'm still cool with to this day. Both of those women were older at that time. So this was in 2012. Both of them were in their 30s. Both of them had children. One of them had one and the other one had three. So I knew it wasn't no way. Chances are they weren't going to fuck me over or try to rob me because that was my big thing. I wasn't trying to come to no different country and get set up or get robbed or get jacked. I didn't want no type of experiences like that. So those two women, the first one helped me get my first apartment. She co-signed for me. The second one helped me get my second apartment. She co-signed for me. The first one helped me get my refrigerator and my stove because newsflash, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but one of the biggest things that you will know when you first come here is that when you rent an apartment, and I'm not talking about one of these condos, one of these $500 a month joints that or $1,000 a month on the beach. I'm not talking about that. Obviously, if you have enough money, if you're coming here with Army retirement, Navy retirement, Air Force retirement checks, $3,000 to $5,000 a month, that's more than enough that you will need to live here comfortably. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the people that want to live like the Dominicans live, that want to live outside of the tourist areas, which is a little bit more advanced and also a little bit more difficult, especially if you don't speak the language. So a lot of my course is talking about how to navigate those type of situations when you don't speak Spanish or when Spanish is not, you know, your, your strength. Maybe you speak a little Spanish, but you know that when it comes to uh, negotiating deals, you know you're going to get the short end of the stick simply because you're American. Just like a, an American would try to take a advantage of an immigrant that's coming to live in the States by overcharging them for rent or not charging them the fair price. Why? Because they know they can't do nothing about it. Who are they going to complain to? How do you get around all of that bullshit? Well, that's what I talk a lot about in my course. So the name of the course is DR Bootcamp, Island Integration 101, Navigating Work, Home, and Culture in the Dominican Republic. Uh, course description is intensive three-month boot camp. So what I had did was in January, February, and March, I had a group of eight brothers. And these eight brothers, I took them on this journey. These are all brothers that are looking to live in the Dominican Republic. And I don't care what city you want to move to. I don't talk a lot about Sasua because that's not my vibe. For a lot of the brothers that follow me, they follow me because I'm not on that. I'm not on that Sasua shit. Yeah, I could go to Sasua and tear some shit down. Not only tear some shit down, but pay less than what you niggas is paying <laughs> because I speak the language, right? So... I'm not going to have to pay what you have to pay, but I don't like getting pussy like that. Here's my whole thing about that. And I know I'm, I'm making a lot of tangents and I apologize, but that's the point of this uh, live stream. It's just, it's just to get some shit off my chest. Uh, and, and also to introduce uh, myself to any of the new brothers or sisters that follow me now uh, after they've seen that video with me and Giamma. So I'm going to let you know right now, I don't babysit motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? When you come here and you want to hang out with me, or you want to kick it with me. If you if this is your first trip, if this is your second trip, you need to wait. I'm going to tell you, you you're going to need to wait a good six months or two or three more trips before you fuck with me because I ain't babysitting nobody. We're not going into the fast food place. And I ain't going to be standing with, with you looking stupid while you sit up there and try to push out your order. Because you ain't practiced your Spanish before you decided to come. I'm not no goddamn tour guide. I'm not no babysitter. So, and I'm saying that to say this. That should be motivation for brothers to get up on their shit. Stop being lazy. Do something for yourself the same way you do shit for other people. This is tough love. This is not negative. I'm not coming at you brothers no type of way. This is tough love. This is the shit that I needed to get up off my ass, right? 
And so I'm trying to do that for you brothers too. But there's a point in that where it might feel like maybe I'm being condescending or maybe I'm trying to talk down to you and that's not the case. This is coming from a place of love and I really, really want my brothers to do better. Having said that, that's one of the reasons I created this course. So this intensive three-month boot camp is designed to equip participants with the essential skills and knowledge required for living and working in DR. So what is the course? Let me show you. There's three phases to this. In the first month, we talk about getting started and settling in. In phase two, we talk about employment and business opportunities. And then in phase three, final preparations, buying or renting property. So what did the classes look like? So I have all of this up now uh, on the website. So it's PowerPoint presentations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to teach all of these courses specifically and then post them on the website. So there will be the, uh, so these are just some of the courses, Introduction to Dominican Republic and Cultural Orientation, Visa and Work Permit Process. There are six Spanish classes each one building on the previous one. So throughout the three phases, I have six Spanish classes, finding accommodations, opening a bank account, navigating public transportation part one. So that's actually section six and this is section seven, uh, navigating public transportation part two. And in that one, I talk about everything that you need to know as far as how to get on the bus, how to get off the bus, how to learn the different routes, how to use the Metro, how to use a Wagwa, everything that you need. It was so much information, I had to break it up into two different parts. Uh, uh, this is the second Spanish class, setting up internet and cable services, and then furnishing your own apartment. In addition to these courses, what I also did was I had real Dominicans that live here in the Dominican Republic come into the classes, talk a little bit about what it is that they do so the students can ask some questions about their lives here. Like, how much do you pay a rent? And what's a good price to pay? And so, like, you're able to get information in real time from actual Dominicans who speak really good English. These Dominicans are people that I teach English to. So these are my actual students, a bunch of ladies. You know what I'm saying? And then what this, I, ha I have one student that's a guy, but the majority of my students are females. So all these wonderful, beautiful, professional ladies that come into the group, it was a whole vibe. I ain't gonna bullshit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We hanging out. The whole hour was just us just chopping it up, having a wonderful conversation. So I was really happy to bring this to those brothers. And they told me, as far as the brothers that I talked to, because I always do, a, I did a survey at the end of this that it was very helpful, very insightful, and they appreciated the courses. When I asked the brothers, what was your favorite part? Most of them said the stories that I would tell <laughs> while we was in the course, you know what I'm saying? Like I knew this shit wasn't being recorded. So then that, so like when I was talking about like public transportation, I'm like, oh my God, I remember this one time I was going over to this shorty house and blah, 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 blah. You know, like the whole story, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, that's crazy. Uh, and I got so many of those stories. And what's crazy is that I don't know which story I'm going to tell. It just depends on what we're talking about. It depends on the course itself, right? So in my opinion, it's very useful. Now, if you're doing it through the course, it was 300. But what I'm doing is something different. And if you just wanted each phase, it was 150. I'm doing something different now. I'm about to put all of this on my Patreon. I'm about to put the whole course up on my Patreon. I figured that if people want the information, they can just get it like that. So if you want to, what is, I think the minimum is like $5 a month. If you have $5 a month, jump on my Patreon and you can have all of that information. And not only do I have, not only am I going to put the course on Patreon, but I'm also going to put the, uh, hold on. But, I'm, but I also have the course. Uh, let me show y'all. I got some crazy shit up on my Patreon that I can't put nowhere else. So, Here's some shit that you might find on my Patreon. So 
So this is when Cuba and the Dominican Republic was playing. So I was right there getting getting the shots for the for the, for my boys. You know what I'm saying? And then we got the classes. I gotta go. Oh, did I? No, I did. Yeah, here we go. Okay, I was gonna say no, I didn't delete those classes. I just changed the. Uh, the I gotta change the thumbnails. So then, like, this is what it would look like. Refresh this one. <laughs> right. I know. I definitely need help with that. With a speak. With a spiel. We definitely need a good spiel. Yeah. It's really important. So, like, I'm going to give you guys an example. Like, I got a message from uh, this guy, Raymundo, right? Mm -hmm. And Raymundo said that he knew a lady that was looking to, uh, hold on. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, this was, th here's the guy. Uh, so, look, this girl, her name is Maciel, but with an X and two L's. Uh, she's a lawyer. Um, she's working from home. Uh, I evaluated her. She has a crazy concept and uh, this is the only thing that you should be on the lookout. Uh, she wants free classes. I gave her a free demo with the evaluation and um, I told her like, look, this is as much as I can do. Don't tell her anything about that. You know, she's just She's going to hit you up with. <laughs> so basically what I did with the course is I just let brothers into the background to kind of see what it's like to do what I do. And that was not part of the DR boot camp. That was the course that I did teaching brothers how to teach English. All of those classes are up on my Patreon as well. So I'm putting the uh, I'm going to put the name of my Patreon in the uh in the chat real quick. Hold on, give me just a second. So if anyone is interested in jumping on, it's here. It's patreon.com slash doobie man. D zero zero B one three M A N. Patreon.com forward slash doobie man, but the O's are zeros one three M A N. Uh, I'm pushing, I only got two Patreons, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to push everybody to my Patreon so that way I, I got a reason to post here more. Right now, I don't, I don't just really feel motivated to be posting on this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But all of this shit is locked because I'm not signed in as me. But obviously, if you are you <laughs> and you jump on, you're going to have access to all of this stuff. All right. Wait a second. Am I even showing this? God damn it. Sorry about that. I also have a couple of videos where I show brothers how to get on Tinder and how to use Tinder. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot about this, too. I wrote a book. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I haven't finished it. <laughs> Yo, I forgot about this shit. I got to finish this shit. I've been so fucking busy. I ain't had a chance to finish it up. Uh, but this is uh, an excerpt from the book that I'm writing. And the name of the book is called Single Man's Guide for DR. So this is one of the stories that I tell. And in this story, this is the first impressions of DR. So this is literally the my first impressions after I, have, after I got off the flight. It's a pretty interesting read if you're into that type of stuff, but I got a lot of information here that I feel like is really useful and really important. Uh, Oh, I got the picture. Hold on, let's see. I forgot I did this shit. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I can't post real. Quick. Oh boy. I did the book, I did the cover and everything. Yeah, that's crazy. Hold on. Okay. All right, Chris. <laughs> Single man's guy for DR. Hold on, man. I'm trying, man. So what, whenever I get that finished, that's going to be dope, too. All right, so anyways, uh, channel updates. That's basically all I got going on. I've been working a lot, but I'm trying to um, 
do what I can to help brothers make that transition. I even started a TikTok. I haven't done, posted anything on it yet. But my Instagram, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I definitely recommend that you do that too. My Instagram is, hold on, I'll show you. First of all, I have, uh, what do they call that? What do they call that when you collect, but not collect? What's the other word? I have curated. <laughs> I have curated, in my opinion, the baddest women on the planet all reside in my Instagram feed, okay? All of, all of the most beautiful women in the world, or Dominicans at least, all reside in my Instagram. I am not lying. I'm not lying. I'm not, I'm not, listen, man, these are real people. How do I know? Because I curated them. I don't be playing no games. I don't want no fakies. I don't want no goddamn uh, uh, fake profile shits. Nah, son. Nah. 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 All of the people that I follow are real. And if you're looking for somebody, if you're looking for a date, if you're looking to kick it, if you're looking to hang out, get up in my Instagram. Look at my followers. <laughs> I think you might be surprised. <laughs> I, I know a lot of people, like, I only got like 1,500 followers, right? But I want you to look at my, my followers. <laughs> All right? I, I want you to look at my followers. We got a couple brothers in there, but mostly women's. Mostly women's. Mostly women's, you feel me? So come on in, come on in, jump in my Instagram, look through there, see if there's anything that you like. And if there's anything that you like, shoot your shot. I'm all for that. All, the majority of the women that follow me live in the Dominican Republic and they are they are real women, not fake women, real women. And that's what you want. That's what you want. You want to talk to women that's not out here all the time in Sisua. You want to talk to real women. You know what I'm saying? Like actual women. This girl should be famous, in my opinion. She only got 3,000 followers, but she's a real model. <laughs> she's a real model, bro. Sweet as can be. A, a whole model out here, and she only got 3,000 followers. If she was American, she would have way more. That, so anyways, I'm just saying, like, uh, what I've done in the time that I've lived here is curate uh, as many positive accounts as I could. Women that are about doing something positive, women that are about, uh, you know, doing something what they like. Not just women that's twerking, not just women that's uh, posting pretty the same pretty pictures every day. We got to get past that. We can't support that. We can't give our likes so freely. We have to be much more uh, guarded with that type of stuff. Because when you do that, it's encouraging them to continue to do the same bullshit over and over. Fuck that. Why I gotta give you a like if you're not doing nothing with your life? If you don't even give a fuck about me and who I am? I'm big on that type of stuff. I'm not, I don't wanna be no stalker. I don't wanna be no, no stranger. I don't wanna be no random like. If we follow, if I'm following you, you better be following me too. And if we can't follow each other, then who the fuck are you that I need to be following? And again, I'm not talking to any individual. I'm talking about these women that I follow. I'm not just going to follow just some pretty girl. It, it No, you got to be doing more than just be pretty. That should not be the only requirement to get my follow. What I preach to my brothers is self-awareness. We got to be more self-aware and also discipline. And also accountability. Don't blame nobody else because your shit fucked up. You got to look at your own situation and find out what you fucking up in. Like that. If that's the type of 
leadership or if that's the type of guidance or mentorship that you're looking for, follow me on Patreon. Hit me up. I'll add you to the WhatsApp group and we can rock it from there. I probably only got... Now, remember, when Caribbean Conquest was going, Caribbean Conquest was the movement. You can call it a movement. It was the movement that I started back in 2015, 2016, when... Uh, a lot of brothers were coming here for the first time. During that time, I had probably over 100 members in my WhatsApp group. And then from there, from there, um, I decided to uh, expand it. And so we probably had, we had two WhatsApp groups and in each group it was probably close to 50, 60 people. So all told, it was like over 100 in both groups. I cut all of that off. And now I do have a WhatsApp group, uh, OBK, but it's probably maybe 10 brothers in there. But I much prefer that. And these are all brothers that have been here multiple times. So the conversations are not the same boring ass, where, where can I get fried chicken from? Or, or what's the best clubs? Like, man, like, nigga, if you all know that shit by now, <laughs> like, come on, man. I'm not trying to discourage, because I know there's a lot of brothers that may be considering coming to the Dominican Republic for the first time, and I get that, and I encourage you to do that. But what I would recommend, man, I got stacks and stacks of videos that YouTube can't touch. I made sure that I went through and I scrubbed my YouTube page of anything that could be considered copyright, anything that could be considered uh, to where they're they going to try to throw ads and shit on my page. Fuck them ads. Fuck them commercials. Fuck that shit. I ain't with it. I have way more hours and way more subscribers. Not way more. Let me not front. <laughs> not way more. But I have, I meet the threshold for monetizing my channel. But I never monetize my channel because I fucking hate going to somebody's shit and I'm already and excited for the video. And then the motherfucker be like, but before we talk about that, this video is brought to you by Squarebox. What the fuck is Squarebox? What the fuck is this shit? Squarebox is going to get you what you need. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I eat Squarebox food every day. Man, shut the fuck up knowing you don't eat that shit. fuck is you doing? Shit don't even be going with the videos. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck, man? I'm so tired of that bullshit. I don't want my people to have to go through that. So as much as I can, anything that I post is not going to have anything, any type of ads at all. And if I do throw an ad in, like I used to do with my videos, it's just funny commercials that I enjoy. And so anyways, all right, man, that's all I got for this particular stream. If you are interested in signing up for the course, jump on my Patreon. I will be posting two new courses every week not two new courses two new classes as far as the audio or video component to go with the course because the course is already done you can go through all of the different powerpoints if you sign up for the course but for brothers who don't have that 300 who uh are not interested in doing the actual course itself because i'm gonna be honest i thought that it was going to be way more brothers interested and the fact that it was only eight was surprising to me. I'm like, this is good ass information. I'm giving the game away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like everything that you need in order to survive here by yourself. Another thing that a lot of brothers like to do is they come here, but they come here with a group. What the fuck is that? I ain't never traveled with no group until like back when I was in the army. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we moved as a unit. <laughs> But nigga, ever since I've been just on my own, doing my own thing, I don't need no other nigga. I'm not waiting for no other nigga. I'm not, uh, if, if nigga say, nah, man, I ain't going to be able to make it. So then that, that fuck up my trip? No. <laughs> nigga, I wasn't counting on you to come no way. <laughs> what the fuck I need another nigga for? First of all, when I get out in these streets, one of the reasons that I was able to uh, acclimate myself so easily was because I didn't have to worry about embarrassing myself in front of my boys. So that means I could try to talk to any woman that I wanted to and just eat that embarrassment if she ain't fuck with me and what nobody there to see it but me. <laughs>
I can't tell you how important that is because when you with your niggas, some niggas get more bold. But some niggas like get nervous because they don't want to embarrass themselves in front of their niggas. So they don't take the chance of trying to shoot at that, that 110. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, when I went to go see them girls play volleyball, I went one deep. And I made a damn fool of myself. But from that, I was able to get them shorties on the Cuban team to, to, to get with me. Not get with me, but, you know, get at me. And I was able to talk to a couple of them outside of the shit and, and get a class started with them. I ain't bullshit. So I was only able to do that, only had the nuts to do that because I was solo. For me, traveling alone, you are able to move quicker because you ain't waiting on nobody. Uh, you're able to move a little bit more effectively and you're able to move without having to uh, be concerned about what your boys are going to think or what your cousin going to think or what your people going to think because you decided to come here with the group as opposed to by yourself. If you do decide to come here as a group, make sure that you allow yourself time to shoot off by yourself, whether that's two or three hours, whether that's a whole day, just make sure that you do that. These are just some of the things that I talk about in the course, again, three phases. Each phase is 12 classes. Three phases, 12 classes. And then each, so then what I did was each week, it was three courses. And the courses or three classes per week. And each of the classes were one hour. Sometimes they would go over. The reason that I'm not doing it like that no more is because I'm fucking tired, man. I got a seven o'clock class, eight o'clock class, nine o'clock class, 10 o'clock class. Then I get my break. Then I got a five o'clock class, six o'clock class, seven o'clock class. All of these are private classes with Dominicans that live in the Dominican Republic, right? Some of these are group classes. Like I got two group classes with nothing but women and we have fun. I've even had brothers, not with the uh, BR Bootcamp course, but with the uh, Teaching How to Teach course, some of those brothers, I would invite them to join my group uh, with the, you know, I have two groups. I got a group in the morning and a group in the evening. One is advanced and one is um, uh, one is uh, not basic, but like pre-intermediate. So I would invite one or two of the brothers to jump in on the conversation and just to get their take on it. And it would lead to some really interesting conversations, really dynamic type stuff. So those are the type of things that I can offer for anyone that follow me as a subscriber. If you notice, I'm not asking you to like no videos. I'm not asking you to subscribe to my channel. I feel like my channel is one of those channels. If, if you find it, if it was meant for you to find it. You know what I'm saying? Like if the videos resonate with you, it's because they were supposed to resonate with you. That the universe found a way to bring my channel to your awareness. And because of that, you rock with it now. That's the only way I want people to find my shit. You know what I'm saying? I want to be that good ass restaurant off the freeway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That niggas don't know about unless somebody tell them like, yo, if you pass through such and such, make sure you stop at such and such. They got some good ass hamburgers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that. So anyways. All right. So that's all I got for this particular stream. Uh, I was able to do this today because I don't have any more classes this afternoon. Uh, so, yeah, that's all I got. I hope you boys stay safe. Uh, follow me on uh, hit, hit my Patreon up if you're interested in signing up for the course. And the link for the Patreon is already in the chat. Uh, oh, let's see. Some, uh, some messages in the chat. I have a baby on the way. She lives in Santiago, but I live in Virginia. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, while that's not an ideal situation, uh, if you're living in the United States, um, it can work. But only if you trust her implicitly. Like you really would have to have a, a strong relationship with her in order for that to work, especially if you are not going to try to get your child back to the U.S. You can do a lot with this. Your child could be a dual citizen if you play it right. But you could also fuck yourself and be on the hook for a lot of money if it don't work out. 
And because you, uh, I'm, I don't know how well you speak Spanish. I, I hope you're still in the chat. I don't know how well you speak Spanish, but imagine trying to go to court. Imagine going to court in the States behind child support. You know they're going to fuck you. But imagine going to court in a different country where you don't even know the language. Everybody going to fuck you. The lawyers, your lawyer going to fuck you. Her lawyer going to fuck you. She going to fuck you. The court going to fuck you. Everybody going to have their hand out because why? They know you're American. So you're going to have to pay a lot if it doesn't work out like that. So just, just something to keep in mind. Uh, I saw a little travel to DR often is better for me like that. I agree. I think if you come in here one deep, it gives you more opportunities to, to be yourself. All right. That's all I got. I hope you boys stay safe. Catch you on the next one. We out. Peace.